Hello, my name is Dorothy Ritz. I am a career practitioner. I'm excited to discuss two things with you today. One is career, the other one is education. You may be in a life transition. You may be a new high school graduate, maybe someone who's worked for a few years, but you're thinking of a career change, or perhaps you've been working for a long time, many years, but now you'd like to redirect into a different career. Regardless of where you're at, it is really important and helpful to consider career planning and educational planning. In this session, we're going to discuss five key things. One, how to explore career options. Secondly, making career and educational decisions. Three, types of education options that are available to you. Four, how to explore and learn about those educational options. And finally, if you were to come to McEwen University, what career support would be available to you throughout your time here while you're studying. This section is now about career options and exploring career options. This includes two things. One of them is learning about yourself. The other one is learning about careers. Reflecting on yourself is important. Some people have done a fair bit of this, others have not. But it's worth taking time to do to think about where this might lead in context of career and career choices. I'm going to outline three exercises for you that you could do. You can do them after this session or try doing them while we're talking, but I, you may not have enough time. In addition, at the end of this presentation, there will be an outline of resources that you can access that are of no cost to you. And it will also include a list of assessments and other sort of uh, reflective things that you can do to help you learn more about yourself. The first exercise I'm going to outline is for you to think about somebody that you can talk to, somebody who's close to you that you trust and that you're free to talk to. Think about an experience from your life that energized, motivated, inspired you, something you enjoyed doing. Share this story of this experience with your companion. Tell them about it. And while you're talking, think about what are the things here that were really meaningful to me that I might be able to apply to a career choice. In addition, ask the person that you're with if they could reflect back to you some observations that they make while you're telling your story. Another way you can learn about yourself is to reflect on your own interests, values, skills, needs, dreams. This list was developed by Cynthia Gracie Dunch in Careers and Experience at McEwen. First, reflect on your interests. Most people bring a number of different interests to the careers that they choose. Ask yourself, what do I like to think about? What do I like to do outside of class or work? What issues am I passionate about? Next, assess your skills. Most people like to do careers that align with their skills. Ask yourself, what do I do well? What are my strengths? What do my friends and family come to me for help with? And what are my natural abilities? Values are also important when choosing a career direction and often get overlooked. What motivates me to do my best work? What is important to me in my work? And what do I expect to get out of a job or career? Usually it's not only money, though money helps, but there are other things too. 
Also consider your needs. Ask yourself what psychological, emotional, physical, financial, social factors should you consider in your career choice. Examples could be family responsibilities or community responsibilities. Where do you want to live? If you decide not to move, then you will need to choose a job where you live. If that's in Edmonton, then you'll need to choose a job in Edmonton. If you move, there may be other options available. Finally, considering your dreams. Try to tap into what you would really like to do if there were no other factors to consider. Other factors or barriers may put limitations on your dreams, but the dreams still matter and they need to be taken seriously because they tell you something about yourself. What would you love to do if you knew you would succeed and what would be the perfect job for you? The third exercise addresses two things. It addresses learning about careers as well as learning about yourself. When you're doing this, as people talk to you, try and think about your own reflections and how you feel about what they're telling you. In addition, there might be some assumptions you have about a specific career that aren't truly accurate, and this may be a good time to learn about that. You have a network, employers, friends, previous employers, your family members' friends, relatives, your friends' families, acquaintances, someone you take the bus with on a daily basis, someone in the grocery line. It's surprising where you might meet someone who does work that you think is interesting and have a career direction that you might like to pursue yourself. If you don't know a person directly, perhaps someone you know does. If you know of someone who knows someone else, Ask that person if they would contact initially and ask if it would be all right for you to approach them and connect with them. Then contact that person. Request a chat for your own career exploration. Most people are willing to do this if you can manage to do it within a schedule that works both for you and for them. If they agree, arrange for a time and a place. Then prepare your questions ahead of time and be prepared to take notes if they agree to that. Offer to purchase a coffee or lunch. Sometimes that's appropriate. At the end of your conversation, send the person a thank you note or a card. There could be questions like, how did you get into this particular job? What was your education and your background? Would you do it again? What's a typical day like? How do you start your day? How do you end it? Does it impact your family life and other things that you like to do? As you consider the questions, you'll be adding more questions. And it's a really good way to learn about both the career and about yourself and whether you think you might be a fit for it. In this section, we're going to be talking about exploring careers. One of the things that you can start doing is thinking about an industry that you might like to be working in. Within that industry, there are professional associations and industry associations and websites that you can review and take a look at to learn more about what is done in that specific economic sector. Another thing you can do is look at company and organizational websites. Take a look at what companies specifically do, what their job is. What are their missions and their value statements? And then they also will have job boards on their websites. You might want to take a look at those and see what kinds of jobs they hire for and read the position descriptions. You might learn a lot about who they hire and the kind of qualifications and skills that they're looking for. Another way 
to learn about careers is just to get out there. For example, you might volunteer in the community. If you're thinking of working for nonprofit or charitable organizations, this is a really great thing to do. But also if you're thinking about going into medicine or social work or even business, because if you're looking at business, remember that charitable organizations have a business component and they need to do marketing and accounting and tracking their money as it comes in and goes out. Many organizations have a volunteer coordinator on board that you can meet with and you can discuss the amount of time you'd like to volunteer and the kind of role you'd like to be involved with. You could also look for part-time or summer jobs or take on a short-term contract if you're used to doing that kind of thing. Then talk to the people that work there so you learn your own position, but you also learn about other people and what they do within the company or organization that you're working for. Take advantage of those opportunities. Talk to people that perhaps have a managerial role or a different type of role that is of interest to you and take some time to chat with them about their job. Also, not threatening to take their job, but uh, just to learn about their job. Also, join clubs. At McEwen, you could join a student club, and there are all kinds of clubs, everything from the dance club to the biology club to uh, business-type clubs uh, to other clubs that are of interest, environmental clubs, or leadership programs at McEwen. You could join a sports team or a group that is focused on doing something that is truly of interest to you. And finally, another thing you could do is talk to an employer or someone who knows an employer. Ask again if you can be connected to that employer and request a job shadow. If it's appropriate, spend half a day or a couple of hours at a work site to learn about what the company is involved with, what they do, what their priorities are, the kind of work that they do. These are all helpful ways to learn about specific careers. This particular section, we're going to be talking about looking at yourself, looking at the careers, bringing them together, and choosing career and educational paths. At the same time, this is not always a straightforward decision. Think about your life as a great big jigsaw puzzle. There are many uneven pieces. Those pieces have various labels, and I'm going to read a list of labels that your puzzle pieces could have. Some of them would apply to you, some of them don't. But here are some examples. Be in a relationship, work outdoors with plants and animals, use technology, take care of my children, flexible schedule, structured schedule, be a leader, be a follower, have fun, travel, be artistically creative, use tools, financial limitations, build a house, work in a hospital, world events, Take care of my aging parents. Manage my health. Work with environment. Write in my job. Work with people. Speak in front of others. Teach others. Work by myself. Work in an office. Raise money. Run my own business. So as you're making your puzzle and you have the pieces that apply to you with the phrases on them that apply to you, you might find themes, just like when you're making a jigsaw puzzle, you're going to find colors that are similar and start to group those together. So be looking for themes in your own life. Then you may have to make some decisions. Is it possible to change your career in the future? Yes, and it's not uncommon. If you talk to people who've worked for many years, you may find that they've had three or four, maybe more, 
career changes in their lifetime. So if you think about registering for an educational program, this may be step number one. And there may be more steps to take. Things can change too. Your personal growth changes, relationships change, responsibilities, your interests, and then there are big technological, social, or economic changes. Sometimes if you feel like you cannot choose entirely yet, it could be helpful to choose a program that interests you and get started. It is possible to make changes that do not cost too much financially and in terms of time within the first year of your studies. After that, if you continue to make changes, it may cost you more financially and in time. However, some people feel it's worth it and they do make changes. No learning is actually wasted and can be transferred to more education or to a job. Now, once your decision-making process is in process, you can start looking at educational routes that might work for you. There are programs that are two years long, some are four years, some are five to eight years. They could be a distance program or a part-time program. They could include research or a placement, work experience. There are also other things to consider like tuition fees, volunteer opportunities, leadership opportunities, and the program and course descriptions. Remember, learning is lifelong. Graduates with a certificate or diploma may get a job and later come back to study toward a degree. It may be that some courses you've taken could apply to another program. This is not always the case. It is helpful to discuss this with an advisor in the program that you're thinking of going to next. Or degree graduates may come back to McEwen later to complete a certificate or diploma that applies to the job that they are doing at this time. McEwen University offers certificates, diplomas, and degrees. Diplomas or certificates tend to lead to a specific career in a certain field. Degrees may lead to a broad range of career options. Degrees can increase the number and the range of opportunities, and they prepare students with a wide range of skills to be applied to multiple career paths. To learn more about credentials offered in Alberta, at the end of this session, there will be a link that you can look at that might be helpful. Now we're going to talk about exploring educational options and how to learn about them. One of the best ways to do this is to look at the post-secondary websites. Post-secondary websites give you crucial information that is important. Most post-secondary websites also connect to the institutional calendar. The institutional calendar gives you a lot of comprehensive detailed information, including course descriptions for programs that you might want to be considering. On the websites, you will also find some of these things overall information about the program. You might have faculty biographies where you can learn about who's teaching in the program, the credential or credentials offered, the things a student needs to do to complete that credential, the length of time it takes to complete the program, course descriptions for the, each year of study, Career ideas, there might be a link to a list or a document with career suggestions for this field. Whether or not there is a placement or work experience in the community as part of the program. Sometimes these occur toward the end of the program, so you might have to look at the courses in the final years of the program to find the placements or work experience. 
and contact information so that you can connect with an advisor. Advisors are available and can meet with you and you can make appointments, but September and January are very busy times when new students are coming in. So I would suggest meeting with advisors at times other than those two months. It is helpful in particular to look at the course descriptions. Course descriptions will tell you a lot about whether or not this program is for you. Another way to look at post-secondary programs is to do some comparisons. And this is a sample chart of two programs offered at McEwen. Now you might want to make your own chart and remember, these are not the only two programs at McEwen. There are many more to select from, but doing comparisons similar to this might be helpful for you. Finally, one of the best resources at McEwen University is Careers and Experience, a great office for you to visit. As soon as you are registered at McEwen University that very day, you can make an appointment with a career specialist. You can log into the McEwen Life resource and it has several articles, updates about events, a job board. You could access a career assessment. You could attend career fairs and meet employers. In addition, sometimes employers come onto campus and make a presentation talking about what they do and the types of backgrounds they need for hiring. That information would be available to you on the careers and experience social media. So this is really something valuable and something to note if you choose to register here at McEwen. Following, there is a brief video that you can take a look at. We include resources that you can access that you might find helpful for your career and educational planning. It's been a pleasure to share this time with you. All the best to you as you pursue your education and career journey. Hello everyone. We're going to talk about resources that are available to you that you could use to help you with your career and educational planning. Let's start with post-secondary credential types. Sometimes it's not clear what uh, they all mean. So a credential is a standard of learning. A credential confirms that you've reached a specific educational standard. This is from the Government of Alberta website, post-secondary credential types. If you scroll down, you can see what it means um, what an undergraduate credential is, a certificate, a diploma, a bachelor's degree, post-diploma, post-baccalaureate certificate, and then what graduate credentials are. And at the top, it starts with apprenticeship credentials. So you might want to scroll through those um, and to see what kind of credential you're thinking of and what you'd like to do. Secondly, you might want to look at the q and programs and find out what is offered here at McEwen. And as you do that, you can scroll down under the programs website here. And you can actually choose a program. So let's say we chose um, Bachelor of Social Work. When you look at the Bachelor of Social Work, um, you get a description of the program and an outline. And then here you get your admission requirements, programs, and courses in your future, which outlines career options for you. Another thing that you can look to is the McEwen University Academic Calendar. And it also goes through, has all of the programs at McEwen and gives you detailed descriptions as to what's required to complete this program, uh, how long it would take you, and also gives you great course descriptions these course descriptions are really handy for you to think about whether this is a good option for you or not. Is it a fit? Does it make sense? Are you interested in these courses? So take a look at the courses and read them carefully. Also look further ahead to 
the year three and year four courses, there might be something of interest there for you. Also, there are things like in the third or fourth year, there's an independent study in political science where intermediate level students work with an instructor to explore a specific topic in depth. Another thing that you can look at is uh, occupational information. You can figure out what career you might want. This website is through Alberta Learning Information Service with Government of Alberta. It's called OcInfo, and it has outlined uh, over 700 careers in the province of Alberta and what's involved in those careers. So if we were to select here occupations in demand in Alberta and scroll down now, let's pick the information systems consultant. Taking a look at that one, you'll have a video here um, of a person who is an information systems consultant explaining their job. Also has the salary, the wage, the minimum education, what kind of certification is required. Job postings, which are always enlightening, gives you an idea of what people are hiring for in this field. Um, how many people are employed? Obviously, this particular job is in demand in Alberta. Very helpful information. And there are lots of jobs outlined here like that. Other things you might want to do is just learn about yourself and what you want to do for career options. So there is another um, site here under the Alberta Learning Information website called Career Insight. And it has several, it has know yourself, explore options, make decisions, take action. Um, but as you look through this, here's for example, an interests exercise that you can do that's free. This should be fun for you to do, asks you a few questions and will spit out some great answers for you at the end. So worth looking at and fun to do. Kiersey is a private company and they also offer a free assessment, personality assessment that you could try. Um, it has four temperaments that it'll outline and it gives some career uh, information related to that. Once you've got it done, you start here. There are other things here offered through Kiersey that do have a fee attached to them. This is the only free one. And then finally, what you really might like to look at is careers and experience here at McEwen University. As soon as you're registered at McEwen, you can walk into this office or you can make an appointment. You can book right here, or you can attend a webinar, or you can drop by the office. There is a virtual career fair coming up where you would meet with employers. Um, there are also face-to-face -face fairs. McEwen Life is a job board um, that uh, where people that post with that job board are looking for McEwen students or McEwen grads. In addition, there are a lot of resources there, information about upcoming events. There's a leaders program through uh, careers and experience. You might want to take a look at that and participate in a leadership program. And then there are co-ops and work experience that you can learn more about as well. So I hope that all of this has been helpful to you and that you take a look at these resources, enjoy looking at them, and all the best to you in your future endeavors.